Hey, my name is Marcus Burton, Director of Product Development with CWMP. I'm here today to talk about something called authentication and key management. So AKM, uh, which is the abbreviation for authentication and key management, is basically the process uh, that it, it explains how encryption keys are derived from authentication. So you may not know it now, but there is a marriage in, in common or in modern 802.1, or, or excuse me, 802.11 networks, there's a marriage between modern security, authentication, and encryption. So, so there is a, a relationship between authentication and encryption. I'm going to start by talking about WPA and WPA2 personal networks. So as you may already know, with WPA and WPA2 personal, you can either enter uh, your, your uh, authentication credential as an ASCII passphrase, or you can enter it as a hex PSK. So as an ASCII passphrase, it's going to be between 8 and 63 ASCII characters. As a hex PSK, it's going to be, it's going to be a 64 uh, hex character authentication credential. So sorry about my bad writing there. but So this passphrase, uh, or hex PSK, is going to be uh, converted to a pairwise master key. So if you enter this, uh, this passphrase as a passphrase, an ASCII passphrase between this number of characters, it's short of the 256 bits that are necessary for PMK. So the standard, the 802.11 specification defines, uh, it's basically a recommended practice for PSK or passphrase to PSK mapping. So it takes this less than 256 bit passphrase and it converts it into a PMK. Since the hex PSK is entered directly as a 64 hex, uh, that's the same as 256 bits. So we don't really have to tamper with that to turn it into a PMK, pairwise master key. So those are the basics of WPA and WPA2 personal. You enter the passphrase and in some form or another you end up with a 256 bit PMK, pairwise master key. Now with 802.1x eat methods, the authentication process, which is defined by the specific EAP implementation that's used, that process is going to explain or it's going to define how to export a master key from that EAP exchange. So each one is going to be a little bit different, but uh, they all work essentially the same way in that once the client has been authenticated and the authentication server has been authenticated, there's a way to export what's called a master session key, or an MSK. And this is probably a pretty good point to draw our, our pyramid of our key hierarchy. So at the very top of this key hierarchy is the MSK. Just below that, we've actually got to split this out for something called group, uh, a group master key, and a pairwise master key. I'm going to put the pairwise master key over here and the group master key over here. Now the pairwise master key, as we've explained already, is either derived from your passphrase or your PSK in WPA and WPA2 personal, or in 802.1x, you get an MSK that's exported from the EAT process. This MSK is converted into a PMK. So as the standard says, the PMK is 256 bits and the PMK is the first 256 bits of the MSK. Interestingly enough, the MSK is actually only 256 bits, so they're essentially the same thing, just a little bit different nomenclature. Now, since the MSK is exported uh, at the same time on both the client and the authentication server in 802.1x, the authentication server has to then pass that MSK or the PMK down to the access point or the authenticator, whoever manages keys in, in the authenticator. So this PMK is then used during the four-way handshake to create encryption keys that are often called the PTK. And so the four-way handshake takes this PMK, the source key material, and creates pairwise temporal key, uh, which is actually composed of other keys. It's composed of a key encryption key, a key confirmation key, and then there are MIC keys, and there are actually, I think, five uh, total actual encryption keys that are used for encryption, encrypting data. So a PTK, contrary to popular belief, is not actually the encryption key 
a PQK is actually composed of multiple encryption keys. Now the GMK is actually derived separately from the PMK and it's not at all derived from the MSK. The authenticator actually actually creates through some some sort of proprietary process it derives this GMK, the group master key. And then during the four-way handshake uh, as the PTK or after the PTK is created, the authenticator is actually going to derive a group temporal key on its own aside from this other process that's sort of standardized. And so from this GMK it's going to create a GTK and this GTK is going to be passed to the client during the 802. or excuse me during the four-way handshake or uh, in a separate handshake exchange called a group key handshake where if new group keys have to be established but we're not talking about uh, re-authenticating um, or doing the four-way handshake again with a new association, the, the group temporal key can be passed out in that way as well. So it doesn't have to be the four-way handshake. It can be a group key handshake process. So in a nutshell, that's authentication and key management. You start with a master session key or a PMK, depending on whether you're using personal or enterprise type of security. And then that PMK is is turned into a PTK, which is comprised of, of other encryption keys during the four-way handshake. At the same time, the GMK is exported on the access point by some proprietary process. And then it's turned into a GTK, group temporal key, uh, and usually passed to the client during the four-way handshake or during the group key handshake. So again, that's authentication and key management, also abbreviated as AKM. And my name is Marcus Burton. For more information, check out cwmp.com. Thanks for watching.